Okay guys, I am going to go ahead and film, uh, you see my hands, go ahead and film my massive collection of eyeshadow palettes. I had done a poll on Instagram and I was so shocked to see that almost 100% of you wanted to see this. So I did my best to gather everything. I'm not sure if I did gather everything because I have I have things like strewn about in different places because I don't have the space for all of my stuff. I have this set up on my bed. I figured that was the best place I could do this with the most amount of room and it's better than sitting on the floor. So, um I don't have I don't have everything in order of brand I will try to grab things in order of brand but no promises because I was just grabbing palettes and uh, I'm just going to do my best so um, so let's just get into it I'm going to start I'm not going to swatch everything because then we will be here for absolutely ever uh, but I'll try to go through and count at the end to what the actual number of palettes actually is. So, with that, let's get started. Uh, I'm not gonna rank, but I will, I will tell you some thoughts about some palettes as uh, as I go along. If I have like, you know, initial thoughts about them that you know I really feel the need to get out there. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with one that I can actually see the two palettes that I own from the brand right on top and that is the Dior this is the Dior backstage uh, eye palette in number two cool neutrals I think this is an okay palette um, it's really nothing to write home about it's it's okay I don't hate it but I don't really reach for it either I think the cream uh, base is really stupid and especially since there's no cover in it so it just gets dirty and yucky so I think uh, I think it's a waste of space and not a smart design and they do it in all of their nine sh nine pato nine pato nine shadow pans of this type I do however think the packaging is really cute I know a lot of people think it looks cheap. I don't think it looks cheap. I think it's cute. I like that it's clear. You can see what's inside with the silver edges and the Dior. I think it's a uh, cute packaging. If they, you know, upped the, f the formula a bit and got rid of the cream, I would be, I'd be pleased. Okay, so there's that one. And then I also do have uh, the Amber Neutrals, I believe it's called. Yeah, number three, Amber Neutrals. Uh, same thing, same complaints. The shadows are okay, nothing special. Uh, I don't actually like every time I've used this, I've tend to get sort of the same look. So, um, so I really don't love it. And again, I hate the cream base. I think that is so dumb. Um, and so that's it on that. They're the only two Dior eyeshadow palettes that I own. Uh, off the bat, I can see another brand that I own quite a f not quite a few, but palettes from. This is the Urban Decay Game of Thrones palette. They did send this to me, and I'm thankful I keep it in its box. I have not used it, but I have swatched a few shades. Uh, I wanted to use it. I did an entire Game of Thrones series last year. Can you see it all? Uh, but sadly, uh, they sent this to me when I was finished the series. So I didn't get to use that for the actual Game of Thrones series that I did. Um, on Instagram, by the way. Uh, okay, so then I have this little baby. The On The Run. I really do like the colors, but I don't know, something about the shadows themselves uh, I didn't really love working with. They're not horrible, but they're not like 
fantastic either and it just doesn't become something that I grab for uh, even though I really do enjoy the colors uh, the naked cherry they sent me this one and I actually I do like this palette I think it's it's fun to work with I like the shades and I get I do get some different looks with it I know it looks like they'd all be the same like sort of tone but they're not I enjoy it it's a nice palette uh, another one that they sent me, but this one is by far my favorite uh, Naked palette ever. This is the Naked Honey palette. I think this is so totally worth it. The shades are neutral, but they lean kind of on like the yellow side. So it's like, it's different enough that you get different looks than with other neutral palettes. It's a... It's a really, it's a, I think it's a really great palette and I love it and I do reach for it. I keep it in my vanity where I reach for things. <laughs> that makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, well, I mean, if you understood, I have like shelves and stuff and anything that ends up on a shelf means I do not reach for it ever. So uh, to be in my vanity is, means that it gets used. So, okay, next I have the uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette. And this palette was a gift from a friend. And even though these are colors that I tend not to use, I think the quality is really, really great. And I do not tend to really love ABH shadows, but I think they really stepped it up for this palette. I love. I, I actually do love this palette. Um, I created a couple looks on Instagram with it and a couple that I never ended up posting on Instagram. But every time I've made a look with this palette, I've really enjoyed it. And it took me out of my box because it is colors that I don't typically reach for. So I really, really love the Jackie Ina palette and I do not think that this had enough time in the sun and that's kind of a shame. Uh, another ABH palette that I feel the same about is the Carly Bible palette. Uh, this palette, I think it's on sale somewhere for like $22 and I would say buy it. This one is my absolute favorite. So like if you have deeper skin, get the Jackie palette. If you have lighter skin, get the Carly Bible palette. Although I think both can use both. I think I just think if you have a deeper complexion you might get more use out of the Jackie palette and if you have a lighter complexion you might get more use out of this palette but my favorite shades in this palette oh my god I just love this every single look I've done with this palette I've adored um, but I particularly love Mandala, Libra, OA uh, and Bible yeah, I love all of them I really do love all of them. This is like one of my favorite palettes of the year. And I'm, I, I, I don't think that ABH gave either one of those palettes enough time in the sun. You won't see that many ABH palettes from me because I, I decluttered a lot of them. I do not really enjoy the formula. There's only a few I held on to. I did hold on to Soft Glam, but I never use it. This is one that goes onto a uh, a bookshelf that I have, and I never use it. Never ever reach for it at all. I don't like I don't like working with the with these shadows, so I don't use it. I have held on to this for years and years, and I will probably never get rid of it. This is the original Master Palette by Mario. Um, I don't use it anymore, but I did actually really enjoy this one. I loved every look that I made with this one, and every time I used it, I got lots of compliments. So um, this one was one that I did enjoy for a time, and now I don't use it because they always say that they're never bringing it back, so I won't use it. Uh, let's see what else. What other brand do I have a few of? 
I don't know. Let's just get into it. This is the Dose of Colors uh, Desi and Katie Friendcation Palette. I do really enjoy this palette, however, I don't enjoy it as much as other people um, because I do get creasing when I use it. I think the colors are absolutely spectacular, like this this blue, like look at this. Like that's just gorgeous. But when I use it, I crease. So. Um, I, even with glitter glue so because of that it makes me reach for it less the mats are okay nothing to write home about they're not horrible but they're not fantastic either I think the shimmers are special except for the creasing so if they could like work that out this would be this would rank much much higher in my book I think the shades are really nice and uh, so yeah that's that Okay, um, let's see. That's the only Dose of Colors palette that I own. Uh, next we have... I don't want to get into ColourPop because I know I have a ton of ColourPop, so I'd like to, like, leave that towards the end so I can just grab all the ColourPops. Uh, one of the few Too Faced palettes that I've held on to is the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar palette. This one... For some reason, I have, like, a sentimental attachment to this one. Um, it still smells like chocolate. I just opened it, and I just got, like, a huge uh, whiff of chocolate. Um, I don't use it, though. It's it's relegated to a cupboard that I never reach for. So, um, okay, next is the Jouer Skinny Dip Palette. This one is Topper's. Uh, but they're really, really beautiful, and this was sent to me by a friend. So, these are just, you know, they're they're just really gorgeous topper shades, really. Like, I mean, that looks like a full-on shade, but the, the colors are just so, so pretty. So pretty. I really enjoy this, and I do use this. It doesn't look like it, but I mean... Not most of my eyeshadow palettes look like I never use them because I own so many. So let me just take that off before I keep going. I don't want my hands to be a total mess. I will occasionally also be taking a sip of my coffee. It is still morning here. So, um, so yeah. Okay, another one that I can grab. Okay, this one... This is the Aether Beauty, uh, what's it called? Rose Quartz Crystal Gemstone Palette. Um, it has like a little thing to keep it closed, which I don't use. Um, no mirror, this, they tout that they are like a completely sustainable brand. I really did actually enjoy working with these shadows. I wouldn't say they are the best shadows in the world. And considering their price point, I think it was $58 for this palette or something like that. I don't quite think that they are worth the price, but they're like going off of the clean beauty, sustainable beauty type of thing. So, I mean, I guess that's what it's for. It's, it is, I've liked every, every look that I've made with this palette. I have no complaints there. Um... I will say maybe the mats feel like a little bit on the dusty side and you have to like build it up a little bit, but, um, it's, it, it is still easy to work with. I wouldn't say it's a hard palette to work with. So, um, so I do like it. I don't reach for it that much because if I'm going for this color scheme, honestly, I'm probably picking up the Carly Bible palette because I just love that one so, so, so much. So it doesn't win it does not win in the smoky, um, li not lilacs, uh, the dusty rose category of palettes, which I have a few of. Um, another one that is smoky rose category is the Lolita palette. Now, this one I did break, but I have tape on it. So, you can see the mirror here. You can... But there's tape. I put tape over there so that I, I don't get any glass, like, in the actual palette itself. 
I think these shadows are okay. Uh, definitely well worth the sale price. I think you can get this palette for like 20 bucks or something like that. And I think that it is worth 20 bucks. Um, I have enjoyed looks. And this is one of the very, very few palettes that I will pair with another palette. Uh, the KVD Kendo Vegan Beauty, whatever they're doing, whatever they're calling it. I will actually pair it with the Lolita Por Vida palette, which actually, this was a surprise hit for me. I ended up loving, loving this palette. At first when I got it, I really wasn't so sure because I had to like build up the shades way more than I like, like to, but I realized that every single look I was getting was like just different enough still a neutral palette but just different enough to like give it a visual interest that you just don't get with most neutral palettes and I really enjoyed that uh, the only shade in here that I haven't used is this one because it's a pressed glitter and I'm not into those this is a cream shadow this is a cream shadow this is a duochrome, this is a duochrome, this is a duochrome. Uh, this is a beautiful, like, taupe shimmer, which I really like taupe shimmers. It's more of a satin, I would say, like a taupe satin. And I, I just love shades like that, so that makes me happy. Uh, there's a mixture of warm and cool and neutral in here, which I think makes that pretty much a perfect palette and then when you pair it with with this one you can get some you can get some pretty interesting looks so uh those ones are a win for me and I do reach for them they stay in my vanity so that they are easy to reach for uh they are the only two palettes by that brand that I own Coffee break. Okay. Next. Uh, okay, this one was a gift from a friend. This is by Mellow Cosmetics. It's the Sinopia palette. And it has... Let me flip it. It has really beautiful shades in it, and I like working with it. This is a New Zealand brand, which I thought was really cool. It's really neat to have something from, like, another country. And, um, and I do enjoy working with it. I don't reach for it that much just because I have other palettes that, you know, if I'm going for a neutral palette, a warm neutral palette, that I'm just going to reach for first, but... I have no complaints about this palette. It's a nice palette, and uh, and I also always appreciate gifts from friends. Uh, that is the only palette of that brand that I own. Okay, next. All right, I guess we'll get into Dominique Cosmetics because I see a couple right here. Uh, okay, so I think this is the most recent. No, this is the most recent one. Uh, the Latte 2 palette. I was eagerly anticipating the Latte 2 palette because I love the Latte 1 so much. But I hate this palette. I truly, truly hate this palette. This will be, like, when I do my eyeshadow declutters, this is on it. I'm getting rid of it. Uh, I have nothing against the shimmer shades. I actually do like those. But these two shades basically look the exact same on the eye. I find, I find it quite pointless to have two light colored uh, mattes. They're both very light. This one's like more skin like. This one's just a little bit brighter than skin. On me, I mean, that's my complexion. Um, and then these three pops of colors, I don't think that they are cohesive and go together. Like, I think that it just ends up looking like a mess. Um... And I wouldn't, like, I'm sick of yellow. I'm not going to wear, like, a mint green on my eye. And I don't really like pinks like that on my eye either. So 
I hate this palette. Plus, it smells, and it's like a nauseating smell. It's not like the chocolate bar where you open up and it smells like chocolate, which is like a nice smell. This smell like kind of like gags you like a little bit. It's scented on purpose. It's supposed to smell, I think, like mocha, um, with like a chocolate coffee, but it's like it's nauseating. I don't like it. So I I hate this palette. <laughs> Um, the one right before it, I really wanted to like very interesting colors, but the quality again, just wasn't there for this one. Um, the shades that I really had high hopes for have, are really more of like topper shades like this one. I wanted to like really love this shade, but like you go to put it on and that's all you get. Like. If it had the intensity that it looks like it has, then I would have really loved it. Um, but it just doesn't. So I don't, I don't like this palette either. So that one will probably be in a declutter video of, of certain point as well. Here's another Dominique Cosmetics. This is the Rustic Glam. Now I really love this packaging. I think it's quite beautiful. Um, but again, I am not a fan of this palette. So I had a really hard time working with this green. I had a really hard time working with this blue. This is a matte black with glitter in it, which I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I hate shades like that. You're either a matte or you're a shimmer in my mind. Like mattes with glitter in them to me are pointless because... The glitter doesn't stay put. Uh, so it doesn't act like a matte and it doesn't act like a glitter. You end up with glitter fallout all over your face. It's a pain in the ass. And it doesn't end up looking anything like what you want it to look like. Um, I didn't really have any issue with that shade or that shade, but I don't like the pink. I didn't like that blue. Uh, I ended up getting a really beautiful look using this shade, this shade, this shade, this shade, and this shade. But, I mean, that's less than half of the palette. And I have plenty of warm palettes that I enjoy. So, this probably will be on a declutter. Even though this one kind of hurts my heart a little bit. Because I think the packaging is just so pretty. And I kept the sleeve because it's just such a pretty package. Um, another Dominique Cosmetics one. Berries and Cream. This one I do like more than some of the others. I have made some looks with this that I have enjoyed, um, and I don't have that many issues with it. I will say, like, some of the shimmer shades, for some reason, they feel like they don't, like, adhere very well. Like, even with, like, a glitter glue, like, they're just, like, kind of dusty feeling. Um, but I can get it to work, and I've made some pretty looks with it, so I do enjoy this one. I just don't love it. It's not like true love. Whereas this Dominique Cosmetics palette, the whole this is the whole reason I have all of the other Dominique Cosmetics palettes. Because of this bad boy right here. I have been holding out hope that every single palette that they have made since this one would be just as good as this one. And none of them have been. Like, not one. In fact, Lemonade, I actually returned because I hated it so incredibly much. It, I think it was, like, the worst quality palette I ever purchased. But this palette, I've used the heck out of it. This is a trusty go-to palette. It has beautiful, warm, neutral shades with two pops of color that are actually cohesive. You can make really beautiful looks with it. This shade, Espresso, is one of my all-time favorite shimmer shades. Let me show that to you. Like, I just, wow. I just love it. Um, so, the Latte, the original Latte palette. I will never stop singing its praises, but I think I am officially done with trying to um, search for another another palette from this brand that I like as much as this one. I just don't think they're ever going to do it. I don't, I don't know why. I think they had an, an amazing original formula. I don't know why they deviated from it, maybe to save money or something, but 
this was the formula and all the rest are mediocre to terrible. So, um, so this one I love and I recommend the other ones I really don't. So if you're, you know, in the market for a warm neutral palette with some pops of color and don't feel like spending Viseart or Natasha type of money, definitely get this. Definitely, definitely, definitely. How many times can I say definitely? Okay, Huda. Oh wait, I have a lot of Huda palettes. I don't know if I should get into that yet. Let me get more organized. Um, okay, all right, let's see. Do I have, uh, it's really hard to be organized here. Okay, I'll do Marc Jacobs because I, I only have a few Marc Jacobs palettes. This is, sorry, it's a little messy. But this is the Marc Jacobs Stiletto palette, which is a cool toned palette. And I actually really do enjoy this palette. I don't reach for it as much as I wish I would. And I do keep this like top shelf, but I really do enjoy this palette. Like look at this shade. It's so pretty. And, um, so I really do like this palette and um, it just doesn't get reached for as much. Probably because I just own so many shadows. But I like that one. Uh, the next one I have is... This is the Tease. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing one because I'm pretty sure I have one called Editorial. This one might have been a gift from somebody. I don't remember. If it is, I apologize. Um, but this one, I you know, I want to say it is a gift because I don't see much use on it. So I tend not to use gifts as much because I like want to keep them pristine. This one I know for a fact was a gift. This was a gift from my friend Vaughn. And I don't use it. I've used it once just because, like, I had to, like, use it. But I loved this so much because, like, I am an artist. And this just reminds me of, like, a uh, watercolor pan set, you know. So I love this one. And I think it's called, oh, no, it's called The Siren. I was going to say I think it's called The Artist. But it's called The Siren, and I never use it. But I love it, and it was a present. So I'm never getting rid of it, like, ever, ever. It will be mine forever. Okay, next, let's see. Um, do I have enough? Okay, I only have one of these. So this is Lethal Cosmetics. I curated this palette myself. Oh, and I just did that. Yeah, that's fun. Um, so, hold on, let me clean my hand off. Uh, I haven't used it yet, which is a crying shame. I really want to. I made this palette to make, like, smoky looks with, like, a pop of blue, which I think would be really pretty. And, uh, I have not used it. I've swatched a few shades, but that's it. I haven't actually put it on my eyes yet, and so I have to remedy that soon. So... Keep reminding me to use this bad boy. I really want to. Oh, this is a, a uh, an indie brand that's based out of Germany. So, just in case you did not know about Lethal Cosmetics. Uh, let's see. Oh, Kaleidos. I have their palettes right here. Now, they sent me more than these palettes. But I did gift away some after I used them. Ones that I just knew that I, I just... I won't use again because I'm really, I really am more of like a neutral lover. Um, occasionally I'll play with color, but like, I'm, I'm just more of like a neutral lover. It's just how I am. So, but this one is kind of colorful. The quality of their shadows, they're an indie Brit, but the quality of their shadows is insane. Like, watch this. 
like just the shine is so intense they have like such a good formula their mats are good too easy to work with and um and I really enjoy the brand. I think they're a good brand. I also like their packaging. I think it's super cute. It's like a magnetic closure and uh, nice and small, which I appreciate. Anybody who has a large collection appreciates small packaging, I'm pretty sure. So um, there's that. Then there's this one, which is called the Futurism 3, the Astro Pink. I decided to keep this one because it does have like neutral shades in it like with here those two are neutral and then I can play with color like a little bit without going overboard so I really like this one too and just check out these shades like seriously like look at that like that's insane highly recommend this brand um I'm not sure where they're based out of but it is a foreign indie brand uh but they package everything so securely so you don't ever have to worry about getting like a damaged product product order from them because they make sure that it gets to you very safely uh and then my favorite which is crazy since i am like such a neutral lover but my favorite palette from this brand is the futurism one the sci-fi green i'm not even kidding you when i tell you one of my all-time favorite looks that i have ever done is with this palette and I have it on my Instagram if I knew how to easily add the picture into this video I would but I think that that will require like hours and hours of editing and I'm not going to do that so I'll just refer you to my Instagram and you can find it I'm sure you'll find it it looks like my eye is like radioactively glowing it's so beautiful like I love it, it's a halo eye that I did but I just I just love the look of it and I don't have the Melt Gemini Cosmetics, the Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette, but I think that these shades are like pretty much spot on for like the whole vibe that you get from that. So I love this palette uh, and I enjoy being on their PR list because I think they make some pretty amazing products. So. Um, they're also not super expensive, so, like, it's a nice, like, I wouldn't say it's an affordable brand, but it's not, it's also not an expensive brand, so, so that's, they're, like, a good, like, mid-range, a nice mid-range comfortable price to be. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, here's another Urban Decay, sorry. Uh, we did go through Urban Decay earlier, but this is the Party Favor palette. My friend Vaughn told me to pick this one up, and she was right. These are toppers, but they are beautiful toppers also. So I have two topper palettes, this and the Jouer, and um, they're basically like, it's like a glitter topper. So there will be fallout. I would suggest using like a glitter globe, but the shades are super pretty super shiny and um yeah I don't there's really not much else to say it's just it's a topper palette so it would be used like in conjunction with another palette that you're doing a look with which that's kind of the only time I like to pair palettes together is if like a palette is meant to be used with another palette like as a companion palette that's really the only time I'm not somebody like I don't know what you would call me but I like to pick up one palette and just use one palette and that's that like that's my like palette style uh this says it's a z palette so I'm not even sure what's in here this is the last time I made I was doing a series where I was doing like you know make a palette do a couple looks with it each week and like having people follow along with similar colors. Like you didn't have to have the same colors that I had. Um, so that's the last time I did that. Don't I don't really have time for that. Well, actually now I, I sure as hell have time for a lot of shit now. Although with, you know, filming YouTube, it's a little bit less time. Because uh, that does take up time. Um, okay, Makeup Revolution. 
this brand, I will say, I am completely 100% not impressed with. I do not like these eyeshadows at all. In fact, I don't even know why I haven't decluttered it as of yet. Opening this palette up, it even has like a weird smell. Like a, I don't know, like it smells like kids makeup or something. It's strange. I don't like how they apply. I don't like anything about the shadows. I think that they don't look good on my eyes. They make my eye skin look older. Uh, I don't really have anything good to say. And this was one of, this is the Makeup Revolution Soap X palette. So like, don't come for me if you like their stuff. Um, but this was one that was like rated higher than some of their other palettes. So I thought it was like safe to get, but I hated it. Like hated it. Like I would give it a one out of 10. Hated it so much. Which brings me to another Makeup Revolution palette, which I picked up only because it looks like a Pat McGrath palette that I don't own. So I was like, hmm, let me see if it actually is like a Pat McGrath palette. Because I do own two Pat McGrath palettes. So, well, actually no, I own two 10 pan Pat McGrath palettes and two 6 pan Pat McGrath palettes. So I was like, let me see if it actually is. But I've never actually used it. Probably because I was so traumatized from the Soph palette because I hated that palette so incredibly much. But I don't know, this shade is pretty. It's crumbly though, really crumbly. Like, you see that? I don't know if that's in focus. Yeah, it's crumbly. I don't know, I think their quality is kind of shit. So, um, I think that, like, as far as drugstore goes, there's so many better choices than Makeup Revolution. I understand that this is easier to get, this brand is easier to get in, like, the UK than, like, ColourPop, so I get it, but I don't know. I'm really just entirely unimpressed with this brand, and I can't see myself ever buying anything from them ever again. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see. Maybe I should just get into the ColourPop and get it out of the way. Move some stuff that I've already done. I should have been counting as I've been going along. Of course, I didn't do that, right? Okay, so ColourPop Mar, this is the original packaging. I've used this a couple times. Um, I've liked it, I didn't love it, it's okay. It's not my favorite of ColourPop. And I do like ColourPop, but I don't know, I just, it's weird, because I, I really do like neutral like warm neutrals with pops of blue like that's kind of like a thing that I enjoy but I don't know I just don't really love this one uh, I have the soul I thought it was somewhere near I guess it's not okay I'll keep going with ColourPop this is the night owl I had to have this palette this was this was available briefly I think only at Ulta but this is the only palette I have ever seen that has my name in it. That shade is called Rockin' Robin. So I had to have it for that. And plus I also have like a fascination with birds and aviation. That's where my name comes from. Not, well, Robin obviously, but also the aileron. That is, it's, it's a French word that translates to little wing. And it's part of a plane. So, um, so I had to have this palette. Um, and I've... I've enjoyed this palette too. I think, I think ColourPop actually makes really beautiful neutral palettes. I have almost every neutral palette that ColourPop makes and I enjoy almost every single one of them. So um, I wish this wasn't such like a limited edition one because um, my mom had seen a look I did with this and she wanted this palette and by the time I went to go get it for her, uh, they already didn't have it anymore and it was only like a week later so it was super limited edition which kind of stinks um, this is a ColourPop palette that I guess I just have random shades in for like when I'm 
they might not even all be ColourPop. Yeah, this one is uh, Makeup Geek, old school Makeup Geek. And it looks pretty dry, but I don't know, is it? Not really. Um, so this one is just like a mishmash of different brands in there. Um, okay, ColourPop proceed with caution. This is a neutral palette, but, um, it's a neutral palette with, with some pops. So, I think I only used this once. I don't remember what my thoughts were on it, even. Um, probably decent, because it's a neutral palette, and... I tend to like shades like this yeah like I do like orangey like bright shades so I probably liked it but I don't remember that's sad that you have enough palettes that you don't remember if you like something or not you know if it didn't like stand out in your head enough uh, the Colourpop California Love which for like even on Instagram like I'm realizing Half the time I'm referring to this palette, I call it the Californication palette. I don't know why, like, I think of that uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper song, like, every single time. So it's just, like, in my mind, this is the Californication palette. I know it's not called that, but I love this palette. I hate that it has a pressed glitter, but, I mean, I get past it because there's a couple palettes from ColourPop that I really enjoy that have pressed glitters. I don't use press glitter though ever, but the shade Diego, holy, 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 like you need to see this. This is seriously like Natasha Denona level, that shade. It it is like I'm not even I'm not kidding. Like this shade is is crazy good. I also really like this shade called Surf Rider, which. Is kind of like a satiny shade but it has like it's like a reddish tone with like gold glitters in it I don't know it's really pretty I enjoy it I think it's a beautiful palette it's probably I would say it's probably in my top 10 maybe even top 5 it's a great palette um, the flutter by palette this is a great, like, mauve tone palette. They came out with, like, I don't know, like, three mauve tone palettes, like, right in a row. Uh, I only got this one, and I really like it. But it does have a pressed glitter, which I won't use. But I do like, I do like this palette. I will say that when I use it, instead of coming out more mauve, this, um, I would say that the looks tend to come out a little bit more on, like, the dusty lilac side instead of the dusty mauve side. But other than that, it's like still, it's a beautiful palette and I like it. Um, okay. Getting the Good as Gold palette. Sadly, I haven't used this one yet, but I want to. Um, it does, I think that's a press glitter. Uh, and I think that's a press glitter. So I won't use those two shades, but I think this is, yeah, that one's a, Super shock. I love when they do the super shocks in the palettes. I really wish that they would do more sh super shocks Get rid of the pressed glitters and just do super shocks in the palettes because I think that that is Lovely a great addition. You don't want to see that um, Okay, what else do I have from Colourpop? Colourpop. Okay, this one this one is the double entendre palette and this is this was like probably the first palette that I got from them that I really loved. Like, I really, really enjoyed this palette. And people say that it looks like the Tartlet Toasted palette, I believe. I don't own that one because I don't actually like Tarte shadows at all. I think that they blend like crap, so I don't own any Tarte shadows, Tarte palettes. Um... The Sweet Talk palette, I really did enjoy this for a time, but now it actually reminds me of, like, a really bad time. I was kind of, like, seeing somebody when when this one came out, and it just reminds me of that person, and I don't want to remember that person, so I never use this palette anymore. 
uh, but it is really pretty and that's a super shock shade but those two are both pressed glitters which I won't use don't use um, also I do think that this is some of the prettiest like front cover packaging that they've ever done I love that um, it's just a shame that it was ruined by something that is no fault of ColourPop uh, they give it to me straight palette. I don't know if you can even get this anymore, but I really like this palette. Uh, there's one that's, yeah, that's kind of similar. Let me grab it. Okay, so you had me at hello is, is pretty like similar in shades, but to me, the winner is the Give It To Me Straight. I prefer this palette to this palette. I don't even know why. Like, I just really enjoy working more with with the Give It To Me Straight than I do with the You Had Me At Hello. Which, You Had Me At Hello was originally supposed to be a, um, a Kathleen Lights collab. I even tried, like, peeling the sticker off to, like, show you. It doesn't come off easy. Um, you kind of have to like destroy it, but, um, it was originally supposed to be a Kathleen Lights. I think like the Luminoso palette or something like that. Um, but that was around like the time of her scandal. So then they pulled it from her and gave it a different name. The ColourPop's Ooh La La. This was a gift from a friend. I really do enjoy this one, but I don't use it that much because it was a gift. But this, this shade right here tickled which looks really crumbly and it is really cr crumbly but it's also really pretty it's like a soft pinky shade I don't know if that's coming up but it's pretty um, either one. so I decided that I'm not going to use makeup wipes anymore but I have like a lot of them so I'm, so I am going to use what I have uh, so there's that. Here's the Soul palette. The ColourPop Soul palette. Of the two, the Soul and the Mar, I like this one less than I like the Mar. Um, I don't know. I think this one just tends to make me look like a little sick, which is weird because like I really like coppery and orangey shades. It's probably that shade and that shade. Those are probably the two culprits. Maybe if I could just focus a look on those outer shades then I would like it more maybe I should do that uh, the Colourpop going coconuts palette this is one of my top favorite Colourpop palettes it is a neutral leaning slightly cool palette and it's beautiful like this shimmer shade is crazy 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 like look at that um it's a beautiful palette and i've gotten a lot of use out of it like this is this is a palette that i'll use for work um not that any of us have been going to work lately but uh but yeah this was like a good grab for work palette but one that I like even more than this one, and this is one of my, like I would say this is my number two ColourPop palette. My number one ColourPop palette. I don't think it, anything will ever replace this one. I just love it so much. The Brown Sugar palette. I love this palette so much that love is not the right word. Um, I just, there's only, there's three there's three shimmer shades and the rest are all matte but I love that you get like a combination of like warm mattes and cool you have a gray in here which is like really 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 nice and that's like a grayish uh, shimmer which is nice too so then you have like that warm matte and uh, I don't know it's just it's just a really beautiful well put together palette and every single look I have ever done with this palette I have adored and this is another one that like I would grab for work but I would grab this for any time I'd grab this for date night I'd grab this for like anything like this is just a great palette it's one of my it's definitely one of my all-time favorite ColourPop palettes and it is I would like I definitely have to say that's my number one ColourPop these are my my one and my two
ColourPop palettes. So I'm not really like ranking everything here, but those two, yeah, one and two right there. Here's the ColourPop Femrosa She palette. I like this palette, but there's only four matte shades, which I think gives it uh, a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, I think I would like it more if there was just a couple more, uh, something like deeper to like really give some depth and something lighter to like really brighten things up. But I have made beautiful looks with this palette and I do enjoy it. I just think that the fact that it only has the four mattes is just a little bit of a downer. That's all. Uh, the ColourPop. Yes, please. I actually got this after they changed the packaging. It used to say cute AF which was like really weird because it was always called the Yes Please palette. But this one is sort of kind of a dupe for the Natasha Denona Sunset palette, which to be quite honest, I have the Natasha Denona Sunset palette, so I never reach for this. Because if you have Natasha and you have ColourPop, what the heck do you think you're gonna grab for? Obviously you're grabbing Natasha because you spent $129 for Natasha and this was what? $12 like what do you think you're gonna grab it really it's not like rocket science you're you're gonna grab Natasha uh, this is the main squeeze palette from Colourpop I've never actually I never used it I never even peeled this off um, I don't think I would like this on me I think it's just a little bit too red and I think yeah, once I opened it, I was just like, mm. I mean, I might be able to get it to work because that could be like a like a nice deep enough shade to, yeah, that could make it work for me. But I'd really have to do something deep to make it work because if I stuck to like the lighter red shades, I think I would just look sickly. So I never used that palette. It's shameful, isn't it? It's shameful that I have enough palettes that I have palettes that I've never used. Um... Here's the ColourPop, it's my pleasure. I, I'm not sure if this was a gift or not. If it was a gift, then I know who it's from, but I might have picked it up myself, I'm not sure. Um, this is actually one of my favorite of the colorful ColourPop palettes. Like this shade right here, I really like this shade. It's pink, but it's scented. No, I say that way too much. It's not scented at all. Don't listen to me when I say that, ever. When I, unless I'm talking about Too Faced or something like that. Um, but this, like, even this shade, like, it, it, it was like such a surprise. Like, I did not expect it to be that color. And I really, 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 I enjoy this palette immensely. So it's my favorite, like, purple ColourPop palette. It's not my favorite purple palette. We'll get to that one later. I do have a favorite purple palette and this is not it. But it's it's one I would say it's my favorite colorful purple ColourPop palette. Wow, that's a mouthful. Okay, do I have more ColourPop? I don't even know. Oh my gosh. Okay, yes I do. Okay. Here is the ColourPop Dream Street palette, which was a Kathleen Lights collab. I don't really enjoy this palette. In fact, historically speaking, I haven't enjoyed any of the Kathleen Lights collab palettes. Even the You Had Me at Hello is edged out by the other one with a similar color story. Sorry, Vaughn. Um, but yeah, I don't like this palette. And... I've, there's really no rhyme or reason because like the shit there's nothing wrong with the shades except for that one I don't like that shade um, But I just I just really don't like her collabs. So I stopped buying them I didn't get the so jaded because I knew I would never use it. Um, I don't like the zodiac. I think I already decluttered that um, Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Kathleen lights collab palettes um, Okay, let's see Here's color pop See, it's probably not all color. Oh wait, I think this one is all color pop, but I, I have like singles like all strewn about in different palettes. So, um, so these I think are actually all color pop shades. Yeah, but they're, it's not full at the moment. So that's because probably because I have some in here. 
because I, I like these are all mishmash. I have ColourPop, I have Sydney Grace, I have uh, Makeup Geek, and I can't think of what else I have, but I have, yeah, I have quite a few um, single brands. So let me just get through those. Here's another one. I'm not going to go through and pick up each one and see like who makes it. But yeah, same thing. It, it would be either ColourPop, Sydney Grace, Makeup Geek, uh, like, you know, something like that. Uh, this is Sydney Grace because I think this is, yeah, it's Megalodon, which I think is my favorite shade from Sydney Grace just because it's like really, really intense. Let's see, yeah. I never use it, but I like the shade. <laughs> um... Wow, look at that, it's staining my hand. So, um, let's just get through all of those. Uh, same thing, this will be a mishmash of ColourPop, Cindy Grace, and what the hell else did I say? Makeup Geek. So, um, there's that one too. And same with this one, which I think this one has, like, my current favorite shades, like, all together. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful palette that was gifted to me by my friend Bon. And I kept the tag on it because I just love it. Like, I can't even take this off. It's from Salt, New York. I just, I love it. The zipper is beautiful, but it's also magnetic. And there's a mirror inside. So... And then this just has like my favorite shades from a mixture of the brands. So this is, obviously I do like warm neutrals because that's what I did here. Um, so they are ColourPop, Sydney Grace, and Makeup Geek eyeshadows in here. Maybe another brand that I can't think of at the moment, but this palette is beautiful and... I actually think that, like, th this is, this is, like, a high, high, high end. This is, like, a couture Z palette. That's what this is. It's beautiful. It's vegan leather. The zipper, like, when I say it's a high quality zipper, like, that sounds so silly. But, like, if you actually felt it, you would know what I'm talking about. And I can almost guarantee that if you ended up getting one you probably wouldn't want to take this off either just because it's it's just that's such a good like um brand like icon what the heck is that called I can't even think of what it's called but it's so good so there's that uh this is oh this is definitely one of my oldest curated palettes these are all buxom shadows so, um, they were good shadows. I think they were underrated. Uh, this fell by the wayside because I ended up, you know, using palettes more than single shadows. But these were definitely good shadows. I don't know if they still are. They might have, like, dried out a little bit by now. That uh, still feels nice. Um... Yeah, they're still nice. Um... But, yeah, it's just, like, once I realized I liked buying palettes, I stopped buying singles. So, I think all the brands that were selling singles sort of fell off the face of the earth a bit because I think most people just started buying palettes instead. Sorry, my coffee is getting cold. Um... Here's a Juvia's Place palette. This was a gift. I have to say, even though I love the colors, and I love the fact that it was a gift, I think it's beautiful, and I love Nefertiti. Um, I don't like the Juvia's Place formula. And I know that that is an unpopular opinion, but based off of this palette anyway, even though like the shades themselves are really lovely, and totally like what I gravitate to I just don't like the formula I don't dislike it as much as I dislike makeup revolution like I would like if they came out with a palette that I just had to have the colors scheme for I would get it but 
Like, if Makeup Revolution did, there's no way in hell I'm buying it. Like, I won't buy Makeup Revolution, but I would, I would make an exception for Juvia's Place. So I don't hate them that much. It's just, I'm not, a, I'm not really a fan of the formula. So, um, so there's that. Okay, let's see. We're not even getting down to the wire yet. We're like halfway through. Here's another one. Okay, so this is all actually Viseart shadows. So what I did here, these are all of the Viseart Theory palettes. So this is Cashmere. This is, what was the second one? Minx. This is Amethyst. Am I going the right way? No. Yes. I somehow messed up though. Oh, these six right here are Siren, and then these are Absinthe, and then these are their their first, I think, four Petite Pros right there. So I just put them all in there just so that I would use them more um, because just having, like, the little palettes that all kind of looked the same, it just wasn't the, out the outside, the outside, because they were just, like, the gray covers back then. Um, it just wasn't easy for me to, like, go through each one, like, oh, I want to use that, I want to use that. Um, so I just thought it would be easier to do it this way. And it has been easier to do it this way, but I still don't reach for it that much because there's other Viseart palettes that I reach for more than these. Um, and I will show you, I guess I'll get into Viseart now and show you Viseart, which is one of my top favorite brands in the world. And you can't tell me anything else. Uh, okay. So, Viseart Koi. This is an all, like, shimmer shade palette. And they are mostly duochrome shades. And they're really, really, really pretty. Like, I love this palette. And this is a palette that I will use with other palettes. Because it's meant to be used with other palettes. Um, but I really like... I really, really do enjoy this one. Um, so... This is also in their new Slimline packaging, which I really like. It's, they're all magnetic. You can grab each one out. The magnets are strong, though, so I don't want to, like, demonstrate because I have, like, gouged them with my fingers. Um, because the magnets are, like, super strong. But you can take them out, rearrange them, move them around, which I think is a, a cool thing. I like that they gave you that option within their palettes. Uh, another Viseart. This one is the original Neutral Mattes one, which is probably one of my all-time most used palettes. I don't use it that much anymore just because it is so old that I am actually worried that it might be a little bit too old to use. Um, so eventually I think I'm going to pick this one up in, like, uh, in their new Slimline packaging um, because I just, I feel like this one just, is just a little bit too old to use. Um, but, look, I panned the heck out of that, and I panned nothing. So, that says a lot. Um, the Viseart Cool Mats 2, which I do like, but it's, I don't know, I guess it's the pink. Uh eh. It's probably the pink that throws me off because I don't reach for it as much as you would think I would. Um, but I do think that the, the shadow quality is there and I, of course it is with Viseart. But there's just other Viseart palettes that I grab more than this one. Um, but if it has Viseart on it, like I have to have it, <laughs> basically. Uh, this is the Paris Nudes, and I have this in their old packaging. But I, I will still use this one on occasion. I just don't reach for it that, that much. But they are beautiful, beautiful shades. Like, they're satins, which I think are very flattering and lovely. And one of the most underrated finishes of any eyeshadow formula to ever exist. I think more satins should exist because they're so nice. And they're very um, complimentary to pretty much everybody. This is the Editorial Brights, 
which I can tell you how often I use this, which is not very often. I just had to have it because it's Viseart. Um, and I also figured that, like, if you're going to have colorful eyeshadows, you might as well have the best. And Viseart is definitely, in my mind, one of the best, especially for mattes. So, like, it was a no-brainer to grab the editorial brights. So, the times that I do want to use color... I would reach for this. Although they did, after I bought this, they sent me the uh, the big Grand Pro, the colorful one, so I have both. But I'll show you the difference between those. Okay, so this is the Neutral Match 2, the Milio. Or, I, I'm really bad with French words, so please forgive me. Uh, but this, this is the one that I now use all the time. Uh, I will say I'm a little confused as to why it's called neutral mattes because I think that these are kind of like warm shades. They're softly warm. They're like this is this is their warm mattes, which is definitely warmer. But um but I th I still think that the neutral mattes too is warm. So, except for the blue. Um but anyway, I I didn't name it, but um but yeah, so I love this palette. Every look I've done with this palette, I have absolutely adored. I think it is an incredible palette, and I love that it's the Slim Pro, Pro packaging. Um, I did like this one. I mean, I do still like it, but now with this, I grab this one more often just because it's it's. it's I would say it's my current favorite Viseart all matte palette, the Milieu. This is the Dark Mattes palette, which I don't use that incredibly much just because I don't love dark jewel tones on myself, um, but it is still a beautiful palette and it's I have used it and I've used... I, will, like, I think the best way for me to use it is to use like an accent color from here, uh, instead of just using the palette alone. Um, okay, let's see. I know I have some more. Oh, let's see. Where's my little Viseart? There they are. Okay, the little Viseart's. Okay, these are awesome. These are the edit palettes, which I think is my actual favorite format from them. This is the dark edit, um, which obviously pairs nicely with the dark mattes. Um, but since this is the jewel tones, I use this one the least because I, jewel tones I just don't think are my thing. Just kind of like super bright, colorful things just aren't my thing. But it's still a beautiful palette. Then we have the warm edit, which... This one is probably my favorite. I do love warm eyeshadows on myself. They really just make my blue eyes pop, so I can't say anything bad about warm eyeshadows. I love them. And just like the other ones, like each one of these pops out and you can rearrange them, but I see no need to do that because the package itself is like perfect. I love the teeny tiny little packaging that is so easy to travel with like if i'm going somewhere i'm not taking big palettes i'm taking little tiny itsy bitsy ones like that and then this is the rose edit which i also love uh only slightly less than the warm edit like i i think this is a beautiful palette and i think that even like together like you can make some really cool looks with them together um so that is that and then I have I don't know where it is at the moment but I have their newest Paris edit here somewhere it's going to annoy the heck out of me until I find it oh it's right here okay so this is the Paris edit this is the the mauve one and if this came out just a little bit sooner it would have been my favorite like mauve dusty dusty mauve palette but the carly bible palette 
it's still is still the winner in my book. Um, but I do love this palette and I do reach for this palette. So it's not like it doesn't get used. It does. It just doesn't get used quite as much as the Carly Bible palette. That was almost a disaster with my thumbnail there. Now we have the little guys. This is the apricot teen, which is like very much like the uh, edit, except you get um, one less row. So instead of getting three rows, you get two rows. So it's eight shadows all together instead of uh, math, Robin, math, 12. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the apricot teen, I don't know if you can tell how much I've used this, but I have used the heck out of it. Uh, it's one of my favorites from Fizzyart. And again, I love the small pack. Like the small packaging is where it's at for me. I love it. Um, I don't know where Soleil is at the moment. I don't even remember bringing it over here. Soleil has a yellow packaging and it's bright colors and I'm not sure where it is, but I do own it and I do like it. Uh, this is their newest one, the Shushu, which I thought I was actually not going to like because the pinks scare the shit out of me, but um, I actually have ended up really loving this palette. In fact, I'm planning on doing another look with this palette today and hopefully filming it, although I know this, this video is long AF, so I'm not sure if I'll get to it today, but, um, but yeah, this palette has actually floored me, and I really, really love it a lot, so... And I didn't expect to. I was I was pretty scared of it. Uh, okay, so now I guess we'll go... Oh, no, I still have more Viseart. I have the 9-pan Viseart. Here is the Libertine, which... These ones are kind of hard to open, and then they have that little flat. So this one I thought I would get more use out of than I do. I think it's because it's the like the darker jewel tones. I'm just not like a... A jewel tone person like these shades are just like it's just a little dark for me but I do think that the shades are beautiful so um, it ended up, it ended up just not getting quite as much use as I thought it would but on the opposite end of the spectrum we have the liaison palette which this is my number one favorite purple themed palette like if you're going to have a purple palette this is the one that you want to have like, you have some neutral shades here you have like a deep purple a soft purple you have silver you have this super deep purple which is like almost black and then you have like this really perfect lilac matte which is just perfect and it's 100,000% my favorite purple palette. I don't think any brand comes close to how good this palette is. So if you want a purple palette, this is the palette to get for sure. I think that might be all of my Viseart. Oh God, no, it's not. I have Viseart sitting right here, right in front of me. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is the Viseart Grande Pro 2, which is all shimmer shades. So this one, I mean, that looks scary and intimidating, but there's actually six different finishes. There's two finishes that I don't actually like, like this finish right here, it has like really chunky glitters in it. And there was another finish that I think has glitter in it. I'm not sure where it is, maybe here. Yeah, there. Um, and so like, I don't really enjoy using those two, but everything else in here, oh my God, like I have made like insanely awesome looks with this palette. Um, like look at this shade. I 
I guess you can tell that I like slightly duochrome like purpley pinky shades because I tend to always go for those but or I like the, the the orangey ones but even like this one which is like a it's like a yellow but it has like a blue duochrome to it I don't know if you can see that but it's so beautiful um I have made really cool looks with this palette and I've really enjoyed this palette. And then these shades here are quite beautiful too. Actually, they're all quite beautiful. It's just, since I'm not a glitter person, I tend not to like the glittery shades. So, um, and if I'm, if I am going to like glitter, I kind of like glitter the way Natasha does it, where it's like the f super, 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 super fine little tiny itsy bitsy specks of like micro glitter. Like, I feel like if you're gonna do glitter, it should be like itsy bitsy. Um, I don't like big chunks of glitter, but I do really like the packaging. I think it feels like you don't get the feeling just by looking at it on camera of like how luxe it feels in the hand. But like with that case and everything, it's just, oh man, it's so, so, so good. And then I have the Viseart Grande Pro 3, which was also sent to me, which this is their colorful one and I've used it a few times let me compare it for you with the editorial brights they are not the same there are a couple shades that are similar yet not the same uh, I had swatched them previously um, on Instagram but there's even actually enough like neutral shades in here that you could do like a regular look just with this palette you don't need to bring in another palette unless you want to bring in shimmers um, but there are a couple shades that look similar, like the yellow looks similar, but it's actually not. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and then there's no, no purple in this one. That red, reddish shade does look quite similar as does that one, but they are different. Like there's, um, there's differences. Like even like those two greens look kind of similar, but they're like, Actually, those two might be. See, no, they're different too. See, Viseart does not swatch the best, but they apply the best. Like, you can't go by swatches when it comes to Viseart because there's just, like, you'll think that they're not good, but they are. Like, when you get these on your eye, like, that's when the magic happens. They blend, like nobody's business they stay put all day they're just beautiful beautiful shadows and they are worth the money and i see entirely why pros use them uh what did i do here there we go um so the only one i don't have is the original grande pro like uh 30 pant that's the only I think that's the only... No, I don't have the Trist either. So there's two Viseart palettes that I don't own. And I own literally everything else. There's only one other brand that I own that much of. And that's Natasha Denona. So, um... So to own that much Viseart, I think, says a lot. And yes, some of it was sent to me, but I bought way more than what has been sent to me from Viseart because I've been a fan of the brand since first use. So I definitely, like, yeah, they started sending me stuff and they're one of the first brands that did start sending me stuff. So I really appreciate that. But, um, but I definitely, I definitely sunk quite a bit of money into them before they started sending me stuff. So, um, so I definitely support the brand with my whole heart and with my wallet too. So, and anytime that they have like come out with something that they didn't send me, I do usually end up buying it myself too. So, um, so there was um, one time that they sent it to me, but I also bought it. So I ended up doing a giveaway. They said it was okay. Um, so, cause I ended up with two. Okay, Nabla. Nabla I have two palettes from. I have the Soul Blooming palette, which I do like. This palette, 
I like it, but I don't love it. I don't love their matte shades because they're not the easiest to work with. But I have made some pretty, pretty gorgeous looks with this palette. So I do like that. Uh, this shade is like really crumbly, but like, see that? Like, see how crumbly that is? But something happens when you like rub it back and forth and it just becomes like this like soft, it's hard to describe, but it's, it is an enjoyable shade even though it's like crumbly and weird. Um, it's just a strange, strange texture. But I do enjoy this one. I don't use it that much anymore, but I do enjoy it. Uh, and then I have the Secret Palette, which I, I don't like this palette. In fact, I went to use this on my birthday and I remember hating it and taking it off and trying it again and taking it off again. So I don't like this palette, but I think I have a plan of like maybe doing some videos where I revisit palettes that I didn't like. Uh, so I would go back and try this again. Like, cause this has like that taupe shade that I love. Why do I love taupe? I don't know. It's like a boring color, but I like it. I like taupe. Um, but yeah, so I think I might try that one again before I get rid of it. But that would be like my final test. If I can go through this palette and make another another look that I feel like I have to take off as I'm doing it, then it will just get decluttered because I, I, I just can't with that. Um, oh, here's another ColourPop that I missed. This one was a gift, um, so I don't use it very often. But this is the Fortune palette. They came out with two, the Fame, which is cool toned, and then the Fortune, which is warm toned. And I have the warm toned one, which, um, which suits me because I do love warm toned shadows. So, it's pretty, and it's a gift. So, I love, it was a gift from a friend. ColourPop does not have me on their PR list. So, okay, so now we have, I guess we'll go into, okay, this is just random. Uh, here is the Stilazi Dark Room palette. Uh, it was the collab with Jordan Liberty, which is why I had to have it. Um, I love Jordan Liberty. Um, I can go into like a whole story about Jordan Liberty, but I'm not going to right now because it's too long of a video already. Uh, but I have to say, I really was not that impressed with the quality of these shadows. And I think that Jordan Liberty deserves more because I felt like the colors he chose were gorgeous, but the brand that made the shadows kind of dropped the ball. And of course, all the looks he did with it are amazing, but I can't get it to perform the way that he can get it to perform. So, um, so yeah, I just wish that, that it was a different brand that he did his collab with because I think that the colors themselves are gorgeous. I just don't love the quality of the shadows. Uh, but I don't think I would declutter it just because it is Jordan Liberty. So I think that would be one that I would keep forever. Um, okay, so I wonder if I, like, will get to a point where it just, like, runs out of time and I can't film anymore. Uh, okay, so let's see. Millie Rose, I have, I think I have three Millie Rose. Maybe two? Uh, alright, Millie Rose palettes. I thought I had three. Maybe I decluttered one. Alright, so this one, this is, this brand gifted these to me. Uh, I really liked the look I came out with, with this one. The shadow qualities are around average. They're they're good. I, I don't think that this is a super expensive brand, so I think like you get what you pay for, and the packaging is really pretty. Um, this one, I don't think I liked it quite as much. There's really there's one, two, three matte shades, and the rest are shimmer, and the cut the shimmery colors are all like kind of like repeats. So I don't think I enjoy this one quite as much. But, um, but I did make a look with it. I was almost positive I had three from this brand, though. I, I must have decluttered one, which is weird. 
And then we have the Odin's Eye, which is another br indie brand that gifted me their palettes. This one, like, there's a variety of, um, of quality in their palettes. Like, some of the shadows are better than others, but you can make some really spectacular looks. And I really, really like the colors that they chose to put in the palette together. Like, they're different enough. Like, I, I feel comfortable in my neutral realm, yet I have, like, some pops of color, like this, like, purple matte to play with, which, that, like, look at that purple. That's a good purple matte. Um, so, I think that this was a great palette. I really enjoyed this one, uh, even though that there is a little bit of a variety in the quality within each palette that they have. So there's that one that sounded weird. There's that one. That one is the Odin's Eye Solomane palette and this is the Odin's Eye Freya palette, which I did also really like this one. Uh, just not quite as much just because of the tones. Like, like tones like this, like just don't really do much for me. So I don't, um, I don't, tend to love them and they also remind me of that ColourPop palette that reminds me of a boy <laughs> that sounds so stupid but it's true um and then this one is actually a highlighter palette but it is still Odin's Eye and they have some cool like duochrome shades which is why I keep it because I would never use like a blue highlighter but as an eyeshadow I would and this one's like a greeny, yeah, greeny gold. So like as a, as a highlighter, no, but as an eyeshadow, yes. So that's why I keep that one. Um. Okay, getting down to the wire here. Uh, lime crime. Let's go into lime crime. Okay, I've had lime crime is like a hit or miss brand. They have some really good stuff. They have some really shit stuff and then they have some like in the middle and then they have you know they've got a little bit of everything and here's the venus three i already decluttered venus one and two just because there was nothing wrong with them i just i had my time with them and i was done so venus three was a gift and i actually really have liked every look that i've done with this palette so this one i'd say is a winner even though some of the shades are a little bit harder to work with I still really enjoy this palette, so that one I like a lot. Okay. Ah, don't fall. Um, this was another gift from a friend. This was like their birthday one. I've really only swatched this one, so I've never actually played with it on my eyes, which that always makes me feel bad to say, but uh, the colors look really pretty. But but you guys know I'm a neutral girl, so I would have to use these as just like an accent. Like it would be a companion palette. There's no way that I would use that as like my only palette. Um, the Venus XL. I do like these shades. However, I almost never reach for this palette. I bought it after I bought the XL2. Um, and then I felt like I had to have the first one too, which, um, that's like, I gotta get away from thinking that way. Like, you don't have to own everything. Like, you do not, like, if you like something from a brand, you don't have to own everything from the brand. Uh, but I do actually like this palette. I just don't like it as much as I like the XL2, which I ended up loving. Surprisingly, because here is the XL2. It doesn't even have that many matte shades. There's one, two, three four, five, and that one's not even really a full matte, is it? No, it's not, it's like a satin. Um, so there's four matte shades and the rest are all shimmers and satins and I ended up loving this palette so much and I never would have thought that I would love this palette. Like, I really never thought so, but I do. Like, this palette is amazing. And uh, it ended up becoming one of my favorites of the entire year last year. So 2019, this was a top fave palette for sure. Okay. 
Uh, uh, here's another Odin's Eye. Here's the Alva palette. This is like one of their newer ones. They sent this to me. I haven't played with it enough. Like I need to play with this more. Um, there's more shades in this one. There's 16 shades. Um, and they're nice and fun. So I look forward to playing with this more and uh, exploring it more. So there's that. I do like Odin's Eye. I think they're a cute little brand. And, uh, all right. Now I guess we'll go to, oh, wait, here's another ColourPop palette. Ah, and it's one that I never used. But I bought this after I returned a Lime Crime palette, the Immortalis. The Immortalis was quite possibly one of the worst palettes I have ever used. And it was such a shame because I, I did end up making a beautiful look with it, but it was such a hard palette to work with. And I was so disappointed in the shades because they the, uh, the one shade looked like a reddish shade, which I was like, oh wow, that is like a nice, like different take on like a smoky palette. And then you got it and it was just brown. So it was like, well, that doesn't look anything like I thought it was going to look. And then some of the shades, like, you could, like, dig in there and you just would not get any color payoff, like, no matter what. So I was like, all right, let me just get a smoky palette that I can count on. So I picked up the ColourPop one. It's a... Um, so I picked up the ColourPop one. All right, I am running out of battery, so I got to get through this really fast. So less talking, more showing. Uh, okay, Milani... I actually, let's start with the one that I know I really do love. I would say for a drugstore palette, like this, this is the Soft and Sultry palette. It's a cool tone palette. Absolutely love it. It's, uh, it's a great palette. I have used this numerous times and I've enjoyed every look that I've done with it. So I love that one. Um, the Bold Obsessions. I don't think I ever actually used it. <laughs> Same with Pure Passion. I don't think I ever actually used it. It's warm though, so I, I should use it. it. I probably like it as much as the Soft and Sultry, but haven't used it. Oh, still sticking with Lime Crime. You saw this in a previous, um, in one of my previous videos. Newest, one of my newest pickups from Lime Crime during the Ulta sale was half off. Uh, have not used it or swatched it yet, but I look forward to playing with it. Same with this one. This is the more colorful of the two, but have not used it or played with it, with it or swatched it or anything yet. So I have both of those. Um, okay, Pat McGrath. Now, I keep these boxes because... That's basically what you're buying when you're buying Pat McGrath. Unpopular opinion, I'm not a huge fan of Pat McGrath's shadows. I think the packaging is what you're buying, basically. Even the um, the uh, special shades are, I don't know, not that special to me. Like, it's pretty, but I don't know. Uh, the glittery ones are prettier. Like, the topper shades, I think, I think that's, I do think that's really pretty. Uh, but I don't like her mats at all. I don't like that she only gives two to three mats tops in each palette. And I don't like how they blend. So, to me, if you don't have good mats, you don't have a good formula. That's, that's how I feel. So, and since I don't like her mats, I don't really like her palettes. And I know that a lot of you do not feel the same way. But... That's how I feel. It actually, it ta I take nothing away from Pat McGrath herself. I am a fan of her artistry. She is an icon in the industry. I respect her. It's just I'm not a huge fan of her palettes. And that's that. Um, but I do have two of her 10 pan palettes. And I have her two more neutral 10, 10 pan palettes. Surprise, surprise. So those are the ones that I have. Um... Ah, I don't have time to mess with that. And then I have this one. Which way does it open? Not that way. Uh, which is the cooler toned 
I don't even think you can get this anymore, but for the longest time it was on sale for like half off. Um, it's okay. Nothing to write home about. And then the Sublime Bronze one. Same thing. I'm not sure if you can get this anymore either, but I do actually prefer this one to the other one. Um, just because I like warm toned eyeshadows. Um, so that's what I have from Pat McGrath. And then from Charlotte Tilbury. This one was a gift from a friend. And I love this palette so, so, so much. This palette is like, I think it's called instant face in a palette, instant look in a palette, five minute face on the go. So true, so, so true. If you are running late for work and you don't have time to do like a full makeup look, grab this and you are good to go. It is fantastic. That's a matte shade, that's a matte shade, that's like a satiny shimmery shade, that's a bronzer shade, two cheek shades and a highlight shade. Um, amazing, loved it so much that I bought the Christmas version which I don't actually like as much because this one has two shimmers, one matte. Which I'd rather two mattes and one shimmer. That's just me. So, um, so this one I don't like as much as the one that was gifted to me by my friend. But I still have it. Uh, and then I have this, uh, this is the Luxury Palette of Pops. This is like topper shades. And it's nice, but honestly, like, for topper shades, I like the Urban Decay better, I like the Jouer better, and I like um, Natasha Denona better. So, um, so for Charlotte Tilbury, like, I don't know if I would buy a palette of pops again. Uh, it is nice, though, but these things are $53 for a quad, which is insane. Uh, Artist Couture, which is one of my newest palettes beautiful 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 neutral palette like just gorgeous uh okay now we're into natasha denona no who to beauty okay so this was a gift from a friend i unfortunately broke the mirror i have tape over top so there's no glass going into it uh this palette this palette is like deceiving it looks like it would be like a dusty mauve palette but it really it really reads more red on the eye. So it's very, it's actually very similar to the Naked Cherry palette. Like I would say that they are almost dupes for each other, but this one does have two glitter shades, which I won't use. But these shimmer shades are so beautiful. Like just gorgeous. I can't be swatching all of these shades, Robin. But anyway, I love, I do love this palette. I just, I just was surprised by, I don't know, like the colors, they just throw you off completely. Um, anyway, okay. The Mercury Retrograde, which actually I really do like this palette too. And this has some really special shades. Like you have to see this shade. You have to. Do you see that? Do you see that? Yeah, so um, everybody was saying that this is like a spring and summer palette, which I guess I can see, but to me, when I looked at this palette, like, I honestly thought that it looked very, like, icy and snowy and, like, a very wintry palette, so I was kind of like, like, yeah, there's a couple warm shades in there, but, like, to me, it's a winter palette, so I thought it came out at the right time when everybody else was saying that they thought it looked like a... A spring palette all right now we've got the okay I've never used this one but these are my colors so I'm sure I will get along with it very well that's the topaz obsessions uh, I have used this one a couple times but not often because you know me I like neutrals but it is a decent palette and of the three neons I think this one is rated the best so it's the only one I ended up getting uh, and you do get, like, a variety of the different neon shades. You get all of them. Like, you get the purple, you get the pink, you get the green, you get the, uh, like, the orange. So, you're getting all of the neons when you get the neon orange palette. So, I have that one. 
these three, I love all three of them. I thought that I would love the light upset the light nude obsessions the most, but that turned out to not be the case. In fact, the medium ended up being my favorite. I I love this palette very much so. And then I have the rich one as well, which this is my second favorite. So actually, the one I thought that I would like the most, I like the least, which is funny. Uh, but I still like it. And then, oh, here's Soleil. I couldn't find Soleil. This is the Viseart Soleil palette. And I have made a really pretty look, and it's on Instagram, with that palette. Um, and then, here's the Huda Gemstone palette. Sephora sent me this. I am on the occasional Sephora PR list, like... Nothing regular, but every now and then they'll send me some stuff, and this is something that they sent me, and I've I've swatched it, but I've never put it on my eyes, but I think I would enjoy it. It seems like, like a fun little palette. They are all shimmers, so it's definitely a companion palette. Uh, okay, now we're into the very end of it. I've got this one, which is... Uh, a gift from a friend. This is the Sir John Can't Wait to Be Queen eyeshadow palette. This palette, so beautiful. Like, I was shocked. Like, and I don't tend to like the jewel tones, but I was really, really, really shocked at the quality and the, just everything about this palette. Like, it's just a very beautiful palette. Um, I don't want to use it too much since it was a gift, so I want to keep it, like, uh, like kind of as pristine as possible, but I do love it. It's a beautiful palette, and it's got a really nice um, packaging. And okay, and now we've got Natasha. All right, this is the Tropic palette. If I were to declutter any Natasha palette, it's this one, because uh, this was probably her least quality palette ever. Um, that bottom row sucks. Uh, okay. The Safari palette. Now, when I open this up, you're going to be like, that's not Safari. What I did was I changed it around. I took some, like, colors from the Lila palette and colors from the Safari palette. So I made, like, my own little Franken palettes. But I have both. So this was, like, the warmer version that I made. And then I made Leela the cooler version. So, so they're both Franken palettes, but it is Safari and Leela, both of those, just totally rearranged. Um, cause, uh, yeah, okay. Um, here is the Sunset palette, which looks a mess. I got a lot of use out of this palette. I love this palette. I think it's a beautiful palette. It is one of my one of my favorite Natasha palettes but we're gonna get into more favorites in a second uh for the longest time this was my number one favorite Natasha palette this is the gold palette which I have gotten probably almost the most use out of uh of all of her palettes there's only one that I've used more than this one. And I love this palette. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous palette. This one, the Biba palette. This is my number one favorite Natasha palette. It has cream shadows, like that cream black. You will not get any fallout when you use that. You can use it as a shadow. You can use it as a liner. You can use it as anything. There's a couple cream shadows. Cream, cream um cream uh, I think that's it no cream so there's four cream shadows there's only three shimmer shades and then the bottom row is like cool shades the middle row is like warm neutral shades and then the top row is like neutral shades so um it's a really great palette really easy to work with and I adore it uh, the Metropolis palette, 
Um, I like it, but I don't love it. I kind of feel like this palette is more of like a greatest hits palette for her with some pops that she hadn't used before. Like you don't usually see blue with Natasha, but there's so much gold in here. There's so much brown in here. There's so much orange in here. Um, so I really feel, I, it just feels like a greatest hits basically to me, which is why I think I like it less, but it's still a good quality palette and I've gotten some really nice looks out of it. So I do enjoy it. It's just not my favorite from her. That's all. Um, Sunset is one of my favorites from her and it's her MIDI, M-I-D-I format. So it's half price. It's 65 instead of 129 for the 15 pan palette. And uh, I think that's a much better price point. And I have gotten such beautiful looks out of this palette. I did 10 looks with it on Instagram. It's one that I've had. Oh, I did also with uh, the Sunset palette too. Um, and this is probably one of my favorite palettes of hers as well. I think it's a wonderful palette. In fact, the only palettes of hers that I do not own are the two large 28 pan palettes and the most recent love palette. I had no interest in the love palette, so I didn't get it, which was weird. And I never thought that would happen. But this palette was sent to me by my friend Bon, helping me complete my Natasha collection. Uh, I have used this palette 